Hi guys and welcome to another Nexus 7 video looking at another 4.2 Jelly Bean update feature and today we are going to look at how you can add a new user to the device so that more than one person can use the device so for example if you have a household with fa a family you can have husband, wife and maybe a children's account. So what I'm going to do is add a new user completely from scratch and I'm going to add a new user which has no email address. Uh, so effectively no online account. So you go into settings, choose users and then from here uh, you can choose to add a new user in this top right hand corner here. Uh, so I'll create one and it says things that such as after you create a new user that person needs to go through a setup process which we'll do and then any user can accept updated app permissions on behalf of all users. So uh, make sure this person is available to take the tablet and set up this space so uh, I'm calling myself over so we'll set it up now. So it's what it's done is it's kind of locked out and then come to the uh, lock screen so if I unlock it now it's going to say welcome and we'll add a new user. Now a couple of things to note here, some important information is that the tablet, the tablet owner can uninstall your apps and remove your space completely. So there is still a master user who could get rid of an account if uh, needs be. So we're going to say that we do not have a Google account and we're not going to get one. We're just going to continue through the process. And as you can see, the keyboard has switched back to a default keyboard. I usually use a different keyboard, but uh, now I'm someone else. We're going to have a new keyboard, well, the, the old keyboard. And so the setup is complete. And that is basically it. I'm now into my use, uh, into the home screen. And as you can see, it's defaulted back to some very basic things. And it's saying here that authentication is required to show the Google Play Market because obviously I don't have an account and if I try to go to the market store it would demand that I add an account so imagine if you have children who don't have email addresses and you don't want to add an email this is effectively what they're going to have and I think one of the problems with this at the moment is that if I go to the applications um, that none of my applications are actually here from the tablet, they're still locked into my user account. So things like I've installed this Facebook, Stick Cricket, uh, News Republic, Happy Geek, well the list is endless of the things I've, I've installed, but of course none of these are available to somebody who doesn't have uh, an online account. So, what we'll do now is we'll actually delete this account and we're going to create another account which does actually have a, a email account and we'll see what we can do differently so if I go and lock the screen we're going to switch back to my user and unlock it and just before we go any further I just want to check uh, what my current usage is here uh, looking at my task manager it says that I've got 366 mega of RAM available so I'm not entirely sure if when you have multiple users whether if you have other users they still have processes running in the background so whether it consumes resources or not. Anyway we'll go back to the settings and we'll go to users and we will bin VGJ Felix so VGJ Felix is gone and then we'll add another user again and now this person is ready to set up. So the same process again. I'm going to say we don't have an account, but we are going to get an account. Okay, so I think I've gone through the process of creating a new account now. It's saying that my setup is complete. Uh, as you can see now, this time it's connecting to the Google Play Market. Uh, because uh, I have an account to use. Now that I've created a new user uh, with an email address, if I wanted to get access to the applications from the other user on a tablet, I would still have to sync the two accounts together. And to do this, I would have to go to uh, the settings in the marketplace, choose accounts, 
and then I, I would have to add a new account and then choose an existing one and putting my email address for my other account. Now I'm not going to do that because it's, it's a bit um, a bit of a long process and I don't want to mess up my, the accounts that I currently have but that would be the way that you could share applications on the same device. It's a bit of a, a tricky way to do things but I guess there does need to be some sort of security uh, between the two accounts in case it's a, 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 an account at a, at a school, uh, an institution, a business and so on. You do need to sort of restrict, give some restrictions. Now, I don't really have too much experience about using multiple accounts. Usually when I have a device it's only me who uses it. But I guess in principle it sounds like a pretty good idea uh, to be able to create accounts, especially create an account where uh, perhaps you're doing it for your children who don't have an email address and you don't want to give them an email address. Although it does give you a bit of a problem on how to uh, copy files from one set area to one application to the other sorry one account to the other and I guess you would do that through perhaps using ES file manager uh, creating an app backup and then opening up ES file manager on the other accounts uh, and then using the backup app in order to reinstall it. Kind of a tricky situation I can't think of a better way to do it but I'm sure you out there will have better suggestions so I don't have necessarily have any complaints about the uh, multiple accounts I just can't see me using it as much as other people, so if you do have any feedback, please do give it to me. So thanks for watching the uh, videos I've been doing on the 4.2 Jelly Bean update. A lot of new features, some of them not quite well executed as I would have hoped, such as the uh, lock screen widgets, but on the whole, it's all free stuff, and it's certainly enhanced the usability of a Nexus 7. The one complaint I would have, actually, is that, and this is difficult to replicate, uh, the lock screen doesn't tend to be as responsive these days. When I press the power button to get the uh, to get the tablet to wake up, sometimes it doesn't do that, uh, and the lock screen just seems to appear about 10 seconds later. And the, that's the only real bug I've seen to have been able to find uh, with the new operating system. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please do ask, and I'll see you again soon in more Nexus 7 videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please click that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And if you're hungry for more videos, subscribe. It's free after all.